Hey guys, so this video we're gonna be looking at the experience of one woman when she heard the Hazan, how it changed her life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa My name's Aisha Rosalie and this is my Reva story. So I was born in the UK. My parents didn't believe in God. I wasn't brought up Christian. We didn't go to church or anything like this. No understanding of God, uh, no concept of a creator. I always felt like the world was more than just what I see. And it wasn't until my trip to Turkey, I went to Istanbul, that I actually really discovered religion and um, God for the first time. So I went to Turkey by myself, I was traveling and I stayed in a hostel. I was just doing touristy things and as you probably know, in Turkey they have Blue Mosque. I wanted to visit, but first I wanted to buy a hijab. So I went to this little shop, I told the lady about my situation and she gave me an easy to wear hijab which is actually the one I'm wearing now. Oh, it's really? very special to me as ah, it's the hijab she that I reverted it. in. I didn't want to go all the way back to my hostel to put it on. So I went to a Cafe Nero and I had blonde hair at the time. I had my hair up in a ponytail and I walked in Cafe Nero and I went in the bathroom and I took this headscarf out the packet and I was like, oh, even though it was an easy to wear one, I still struggled a little bit. And I put it on and I looked in the mirror and I was like, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not wearing it for fashion. So I put it on and I left Cafe Nero and I started my journey to Blue Mosque, which was actually an hour and a half walk from my hostel. But on the way to Blue Mosque, I decided to stop and I brought some prayer beads because when I was in Istanbul, I kept seeing people using them. They were super cheap, like 50p. And I looked up what you're supposed to, you know, do while you have them. And I was like, okay, subhanallah. But obviously I didn't know how to say it. So I was like, sub. But Han Allah and then <laughs> Alhamdulillah and Allah Akbar. I was practicing it on the way there, like in my pocket. I was doing it like 33 times, like each one, you know, Subhanallah, 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 Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. It was only like a 33 um, bead one. I carried on my way to the mosque. I went in, I was kind of nervous because I felt like a fraud because obviously I wasn't Muslim, I was just wearing a headscarf and I thought, oh, what if people think I'm Muslim and they start saying things to me and then I don't understand and then I'm gonna be embarrassed and I started overthinking it. I didn't actually go in the area where people go to pray because I didn't know how to pray, I didn't know anything about that. So I just sat down on the floor and I just did my beads and I mm. sat there for probably around an hour. I just enjoyed being there, I just felt so peaceful. And eventually I got up and I left and as I was leaving, uh, the azan started playing Allah. and I remember it was just so loud um, opposite Blue Mosque there's another mosque I remember being in between these two massive mosques and the azan playing so loudly and it sounded amazing I remember just stopping in the street and just listening and just like Alhamdulillah well okay I didn't say Alhamdulillah yeah she was a Muslim at that time so she wouldn't say that Alhamdulillah it was amazing <laughs> straight after the azan stopped my phone that was on like 50% battery just randomly died. I was trying to navigate myself back to my hostel, but I couldn't. Uh, I kind of panicked a little bit, but then I stopped and I thought, ah, this is fine. I put my phone in my pocket. I took my beads out of my pocket and I carried on doing what I was doing before. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. And I found my way back to the hostel eventually. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. And I got back to the hostel and I picked up a English translation of the Quran that was in the hostel and I started reading it. I guess everything went from there really. After that day I never took, I probably took my hijab off like once or twice because I wasn't Muslim but whenever I could get away with wearing it I would even when I come back to London. I don't know, I just enjoyed the feeling of wearing it. I, I mean a stock for a lot, I didn't dress exactly like amazingly before I reverted. The idea of dressing modestly just seemed so nice to me that kind of humility or, you know, not showing off all the time. I I mean, I, I guess I was quite a show off. I really enjoyed exploring that side of myself of just being humble and modest. And yeah, I just kept wearing it and I kept learning more about the religion, watching a lot of these YouTube videos, you know, like these amazing, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, these amazing lecturers. And I promised myself that I would not declare my shahada until I finish reading the Quran because I thought, you know, how can I uh, commit myself to a religion that I haven't even read the book of? So I carried on watching lectures, I carried on learning, I carried on reading other books and I also read the Quran. And alhamdulillah, when I finished the Quran, 
I declared my shahada by myself in my living room wow. uh, at night time with Allah as a witness, alhamdulillah. I guess I just kind of did it. It all happened hmm. in a very strange way. I was never planned. I never, even through the journey of learning, I never expected it to happen. I had happen. to have it a just human I guess witness. Like the God the of Allah, okay. the power he has just taking a random little old girl like me and <laughs> making her Muslim. Alhamdulillah. So that's my story. Maybe it's interesting. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But thank you for listening anyway. <laughs> this is my first video of inshallah more where I just want to talk about what I'm learning, what I'm experiencing. Inshallah, I'm starting my Arabic course uh, in September, which I'm going to do for two years. Inshallah, um, after I complete that, I want to become a student of knowledge. At the moment, it's just me, my laptop and my books, just learning as much as I can. After all, we're going to be asked on the day of judgment what we did with our knowledge. And it's not just good enough seeking it and having it. We also need to apply, apply it and give it. Knowledge is a gift. It's the, one of the best gifts we can ever have. So alhamdulillah, let's begin this journey. That was cheesy. I didn't like that. <laughs> okay, very interesting. I've always thought that Aisha Rosalie's journey to Islam would be one filled with like, I don't know, sadness and depression and you know, dealing with a bad breakup or something. And so, you know, it was surprising to just hear like, well, you know, her journey was just very fluid. You know, she was visiting a different country and, you know, getting a headscarf and everything and just hearing the Azan play and reading it. And, and that was it. Literally looking for ways in which she can wear her hijab. Just she liked the idea and the idea of dressing modestly appealed to her. And that kind of was it really you know from somebody who never really was associated with religion growing up her family wasn't religious at all to just becoming a muslim just almost effortlessly you know it's just like you you you're outside of a building you walk into a building and all of a sudden you're wearing brand new clothes you're a whole new person that's literally what it felt like when she was telling the story like she literally went into a house and whew, change just like that can't really explain it even at the end she was wondering like whoa you know how did Allah pick me of all people you know how did he pick me <laughs> it's just just like that so very very fascinating you know it always blows me away just the different reasons why people choose the religions that they choose why they revert to Islam why they may convert to a different religion very fascinating and uh, this one honestly just as surprising again not necessarily what i had expected but honestly i'm uh, surprisingly surprised at how her story went just the fluidity of it it's like wow yeah i guess you, you can't make this stuff up either way guys really hope you enjoyed this one if you found this video inspiring motivating or just enjoyed it just enjoyed the it for entertainment's sake don't forget to leave a like on this video also want to hear your thoughts and comments down below and i'll catch you guys in another video where i look at another topic relating to religion and spirituality see y'all soon later